Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial on how to do a colour picker. Now I've seen some plugins available, I've seen people do it in weird ways and other tutorials, uh, but it's actually a much simpler way of making a colour picker, a more accurate way too. So we're going to jump in and take a look at how we actually put this together. Now the first thing we're going to worry about is the material itself, how to get that colour wheel spectrum appearing exactly as you expect it to. So let's jump in and take a look and explain how this works. So the first step is creating our material. And the material is going to, we're going to do is match what we see elsewhere in the engine. So for example, we'll create another folder in here. And we can just keep it a bit more organized. And create a new material. And the style we're going after is going to be the same sort of style as you see in the engine. The sort of color wheel that they pick that's the same style we're going for but technically a color wheel uh, or color any kind of sort of shape really um can it can be any shape uh, as long as you've got a way of determining three uh things about it or at least one thing about it the hue uh you're good to go so the one we are mimicking is this one okay so the way this works is we are going to be making use of the so the way this works is we're making use of understanding what actually that wheel actually is so what it actually is is the hue value is the angle that's going around here okay so ignore the gradient to white in the middle here the color is the hue and that's angle is determining that the white in the middle, that is the saturation. So while we're looking at RGB, we're looking at hue and saturation values. And that is what we're looking at controlling here. Okay. So that's what we're going to replicate. So the first thing we need to do is make that wheel shape. And I've done videos on how to do this before, but we'll explain as we go. We need a texture coordinate node. And also this needs to be a UI material. So create that UI. And we'll also make it translucent, so you can make it a circle. Okay, so first up, we need to do a subtraction on this of 0.5. And that goes into a vector to radial value. And what that does, it turns the UV coordinates from this grid like shape, the square shape, into a radial shape. If it ever appears yeah like that so it turns that into more radial shape so if i were to say convert the vector here to an angle plug it to the final color you see it appearing like this now this is great because it means in a spiral fashion the value is going from one all the way around to zero okay which is great for our hue so this is going to be our hue here the subtraction is just so we can move the middle point here to the center of the screen because that is zip like zero zero is up here we need to move it across and the way you move it across with a subtraction okay that's how you, that's why that's there next i say that would be our hue and there's a handy little node you can use to convert hue to rgb because this works in rgb but we want to work in hsv you've got hsv to rgb and we are going to put that into the final color there and the hsv we need to make as a float three so x y z will be the same as h s v so hue saturation and value so values like basically darkness of it and uh, brightness you know so we're going to take the vector radial and put that into the x and we should see it come through here oh, it won't come through yet because the y is still zero uh so if i were to put in one there We'll see in here the saturation value. Oh, and the value we have one needs to be one as well. There we go. There we go. We can see the hue values going around in a circle. As you can see, it's much like the same as the one that's built in Unreal. Okay, same way. Now the thing we've got to do now is take account of the distance between the center out to the edges. Okay, so that would be the linear distance. So linear distance 
is the radial displayed as this sort of size, which is basically what we want. This is exactly what we want. So all I need to do is just drag that into my Y, and that's going to be my saturation. Now, as you can see here, the saturation value is only halfway, because it's 0.5. Yeah, because it's going from the center of the thing out to the edge, it's 0.5. So not too bad. But let's make it a bit better and multiply this by 2. There we go. Okay, so multiply by 2, we now get actually to the end colours here. Now all that's left to do is to make it a circle shape. And we can do that very easily with the linear distance still. We just drag that out and do a step node. And a step node will take the value of 0 0.5, which we'll type in here. And any value that's above that will become 1. And oh, so anything below that becomes 1. And anything above that becomes uh, 1. No. Anything above that becomes 1. Anything below that becomes 0. So we'll go across and put that into opacity. And we get a circle shape. Okay. And then you can see, if I were to put in this color thing here, pretty close to what you get from the Unreal. A little bit different, but... Pretty damn close. Okay, so we've got hue and saturation going through on our angle and our distance from the center there. We're going to apply that and save this. So there you go. We've created now the material for our color wheel. And as I say, your color picker can be any shape really, but this is how we're going to do a wheel. And it's a lot much simpler when you understand that we are just messing about with hue and saturation. That is all. So in the next part, we're going to actually now put that material to use in a widget and uh, show you how to make it interactable with a little picker icon. So you can see that episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Furthermore, if you want the project files to this, you can also download them if you're a gold Patreon member too. Just head over to Patreon and you should find the link there. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all there next time.